to what we've held in the past. So if you have any questions that you would like to hear answered by the candidates um, so that you can learn more about them, please feel free to email me, text me, or write them down on a note and hand them to me on the way out of here today. Uh, I always love including the questions that come from um, our audience. Um, Kathy Abels is on a missions trip, correct? And so she asked me to step in for her today, and I am introducing you to uh, Mr. Bill Anderson, Director of Lake and Water Utilities. Uh, Bill grew up in the Midwest with yearly vacations to Cape Cod, where he spent time outdoors and around water. He served in the U.S. Air Force from 1983 to 1987, married in 1990. He spent the first part of his career in retail management, moved to Florida in 1993, where he rediscovered his love for outdoors being around water. He obtained his uh, degree in biology in 1999 from Florida Southern College and began working at the City of Lakeland Water Utilities in 2000. He has worked as an environmental technician, environmental sci scientist, assistant director, and most recently um, being named director of water utilities. Um, he is currently partnering with utility staff to determine the future direction of the utility. And I introduce you now to Mr. Bill Anderson. Good morning. Thank you for having us here today. Um, I would like to introduce Julie Vogel. I'll talk a little bit more about her in just a moment. Um, before I begin, though, I want to kind of give you an overview of the City of Lakeland, I'm sure some of you have heard this before, but uh, our vision and mission is a vibrant, innovative, culturally world-class community. And a couple key words there, innovative and world-class. And I've been with this organization for 18 years, and I can testify that every single person in uh, the City of Lakeland's organization is really world-class and do some very, very good work. Um, we're a community working together to to achieve an exceptional quality. Again, key word there, quality of life. Um, we have a monthly onboarding session for all new employees, and our city management always talks about that's the business we're in. We work and strive to provide quality of life for everybody here. We're very proud of that endeavor. Specifically, um, before I get to that, some of the goals, we do have economic opportunity goals, communication goals, uh, fiscal management, growth management, quality of life, I talked about that, and government. So as a water utility, one of the 16 departments within the city of Lakeland, our job is to support that vision, mission, and goal. We are currently on a path to develop a five-year strategic plan for the water utility. Um, working with Julie and our entire management team, all of our team members within Water Utility, we're, we're uh, putting together this uh, five-year path forward. And it's still in draft form, but here we've developed our own vision and mission uh, for the utility itself. And as you can see, it's an educated, inclusive, diverse team that embraces change, establishes partnerships, and seeks innovation. Uh, we will be fiscally responsible in supporting the economic development of Lakeland while maintaining a sustainable resource. And when I talk about sustainable resources, obviously that is our water resources that we're responsible for. Our mission, and this is really simple, we call it in three keys, we protect public health. You know, we're providing that water to you that's coming out of your tap. We're also taking that wastewater away from you treating that and returning it to the environment, something we're all very proud of. We preserve water resources, and again, we strive to provide world-class service throughout the organization. How do we do that? How do we support that financially? That's from our rate payers that, uh, that uh, pay for the services that we provide. This is just a quick snapshot of where we fall among many other utilities throughout the state of Florida. Um, you can see that green bar, that's us, that uh, ever since I've been here for the entire 18 years, we've always been in that lower quadrant of that graph. So something we work really hard, again, that's where the uh, uh, fiscal responsibility comes in. We try to keep those rates uh, as, as low as we possibly can. 
We currently have about 216 full-time staff members. Um, we treat almost 7 billion gallons of water a year. That's 7 billion gallons that we pull out of the ground, treat it, and send to our customers. What comes back to us that we, uh, we treat on the wastewater side is almost 5 billion gallons a year. Um, in the ground, we have almost 1,000 miles of pipeline, 450 miles of wastewater pipeline, and about just under 170 pump stations to pump all that water. Florida, obviously Central Florida is relatively flat. We don't have that gravity to go downhill to our treatment plants. We have to pump that to our treatment plants from the customer. And we generate uh, uh, about $67 million a year in revenue and about $62 million in expenses. We do make an annual contribution to the city general fund to help support some of the other services, parks and rec and so on. Um, on the water side, we basically have four facilities. We have a northeast well field, which is up in obviously northeast Lakeland. We have two water treatment plants, one in northeast, one in northwest Lakeland. And that is the Williams water plant and the Cumbie water plant. And uh, then to, once that water leaves the plant, we have to distribute that out to all of the customers. And we have a division of water distribution uh, that takes care of that work. All the pipe, pipelines and pumps get that water to the customers. On the wastewater side, we have uh, one pre-treatment, we call it a pre-treatment plant out in West Lakeland, two water, uh, wastewater treatment plants, one up in North East Lakeland, just north of the Macintosh Power Plant, and uh, another down on Glendale Street. And this is where the bulk of the program comes in. Um, I know this was kind of a quick snapshot in the overview. Maybe a little dry and boring. I apologize that I got uh, stuck with that. But uh, we also have a wetland treatment system. And this is the final process, if you will, of all the city of Lakeland's wastewater. If you kept up with the news just this past April, we opened this up as Seven Wetlands Park. And that's kind of where I uh, first met Kathy Abels. We provided her a tour down there to, to her and some of her colleagues. Uh, I think that was about six months ago. And out of that tour, she contacted me and uh, offered to come speak to you this morning. And because of Seven Wetlands, and we're so proud of this facility, I am really proud to introduce Julie Vogel. So Julie is our environmental program specialist. Um, she graduated from USF with a master's of science in 2011. She served as an adjunct faculty member at St. King College teaching courses in sustainability. Um, from there, she went and worked at Pinellas County with Brooker Creek Nature Preserve and then as an environmental scientist in their environmental management division. And what was it, six months ago? Six months ago, we were able to entice her to come to us. And I gotta say, I, I spent six years at this seven wet, or actually about 14 years at this seven wetland system. And Julie, by far, I think has the best job in the city. Um, and she'll tell you a little bit about this, but basically this is a brand new public park, 1,600 acres, that she basically has an open book to start the educational programs down at this uh, facility. Um, education outreach is just gonna be fantastic. And we're really excited to have her on board and talk to you a little bit about that. Julie? Thank, thank you, Bill, for the introduction. Um, he built me up a little bit. I think I can live up to that right and thank you all so much for having us here today, and not just being a bit. Um, thank you for from me to I, I'm somewhat new to the city of Lakeland, like Bill just said. I've been here for about six years. Lakeland is a beautiful city and a community. I feel very privileged. So thank you for those. Um, I do also have the best job in the city. So Seven Wetlands is our new park, as Bill said, although I think park might not accurately represent all of what it entails. So go with it. 
Florida wetlands, um, they're defined spaces in our environment. They're wet the year, they're very diverse, they have an extreme of a varying amount of animals there, and people from all over the world <coughs> do wetlands in their natural to visit the tourism, the benefits, and such. So constructed trees, the seven wetlands, they are built wetlands to get some of these benefits nature provides. And the city of Lakeland, one, seven wetlands are constructed wetland. Um, sometimes wetlands are called nature kidneys. It's the same thing that your kidneys do for you, right? They clean and filter your blood. Well, wetlands do the same thing for the environment. They clean and filter out all of the is why the city of Lakeland utilizes all of our wastewater and seven job with that. Um, they are pretty cost effective. So seven wetlands, I'll go into a little bit. If we were to build something within the city of Lake, it would cost us millions and millions and millions of dollars. Nature does that job for us. So the benefit is not only beautiful places, but it's also pocket. It saves us by having seven. So on the map, there's a little seven W icon where we are. We are actually part of the gray area on the map, and a lot of people in Lake don't realize we directly connect to the Green Bay watershed region, which is extremely economics, but also for habitat. Green Bay is unique in the world. Green Bay and some wetlands directly to that water. So the water leaving the wetland is Alabama. Green Bay. So not only do we take in all of the city of Lakeland's treated wastewater, but seven wetlands also receive an electric water and Polk County's excess reclaimed water. So we're, we're pretty important to the region um, as a whole, and to Tampa Bay. We're big. Seven Wellens is more than 1,600 acres. This charges to the Alafaya. And in 2015, we entered into a partnership with the Tampa Electric Company to provide our water for their Polk power and cooling water. So not only are we taking Lakeland Electric, reuse water and be treating that, cleaning that, but we're also supplying water to Tampa Lake. So this is kind of where we are. We will have three public entrances. We are not in the city of Lakeland's city limits. We're actually closer to Mulberry, Florida, what's that, Avenue, Florida Avenue, thank you, 37, um, and north of city down in Little Mar Mulberry, my slice of heaven down there. Um, we connect now to Polk County Parks, Lois Hart Park, Carter Road Park, and Lakeland Highland Scrub. So when you come and visit us, which I hope that you will do, you will use one of those to come in. Patrol. And bring your camera. We, Seven Wetlands, was once a part of the Bonnie Lake. So we are an old phosphate claimed land that was put to great use now. Um, in 1984, the mine closed. In 1985, the city of Lakeland was looking for another way to discharge our wastewater. Banana Lake, the city of Florida said, uh-uh, not going to more so thinking about, well, what are we going to do? Are we going to spend millions and millions and millions of dollars and upgrade our Glendale plant, like Bill was talking about? Well, we found this old parcel, and in 87, the city of Lakeland opened it as a constructed treatment wetland. It's basically been the same since then. Until 2015, Tampa Electric Company added a pump, and in April of this year, we opened the space up to the public. A little bit about how this fantastic place works. 
So we're called seven wetlands because we have seven different wetland cells. Creative, right? Water comes in at cell number one. So up here on the map on the left, you can see that yellow square on the aerial image. That's our influence. That's where our big, our waterfall, all the water kind of comes in right there. This white square, aha. Uh -huh. So this is a cross section. So here's wetland one, wetland two, wetland three, four, five, six, and seven. And the way the water moves, it kind of snakes around wetlands one through seven. And I'm just going to do a little quick animation so you can pretend you're a drop of water. You're going to come in that influent, spread out through a distribution ditch. Not very sexy word, but it's gets the job done, distribution ditch, out one of our control structures, which if you kind of think of these individual little wetland cells as bathtubs, they're, the sides of the bathtub are held um, in by earthen berms. The berms are pretty thick, about, you know, 30 thick at least. Um, and the control structures are the little bathtub drains. So water is only allowed to leave one wetland to the next by the control structure of which we have control of. So the water kind of moves around through the wetland before it leaves wetland number seven to the Alafaya River or to the Tampa Electric Company's pump. And what's really neat too about the wetlands, the difference in elevation from wetland number one to wetland seven, so up here, slopes all the way down, it's all gravity based, it's about 75 to 80. We're not doing anything other than letting water naturally flow down. We have the ability to control the water level in each of our bathtubs with a control structure, so we know, okay, if there's a hurricane Irma coming through, we can either raise or lower the water level in each wetland depending on storm prediction or water quality. We want to um, send only the highest quality that we can of water into that, but, which we are discharging right now. So if you came out and visited us, you would see our, our water coming in and our water leaving and pumping just as it should. So that's the water quality side. Um, some photographs from Seven Wetlands. This is the earthen berm, and in this picture you can see on one side of the berm, it's pretty shallow. There's water kind of right there, and then it drops down significantly to the next wetland. So that's kind of the bathtub liner, if you can picture that. Here's that sexy ditch. That's probably Susan or Jamie mowing with a sidearm, which I'm going to learn how to drive a tractor. That's also one of the things that I told my boss that I had to learn how to do when I was drive a tractor. Here's our waterfall or influent where our water comes in, and this is a picture of the Tampa Electric it's a pump station. A drone footage photograph, so you can see how beautiful, diverse these are wetlands, um, forested areas, though, and water lakes. So, because of that, we're called seven wetlands. We really have 1,640 acres of diverse land from marsh lakes and that lends itself to a diverse amount of wildlife. We have endangered and threatened species down there. We have the biggest alligators ever. <laughs> ever. Um, Sandhill cranes, there's bobcat, butterflies, full boar, flowers. In fact, uh, one of your members, Anthony Scott, he was one of our very first volunteers who led the nature he hiked during our grand opening and he captured amazing images of all of our wildlife as we go down. So these are little great horned owlets. Love them. Lots of birds. The Audubon Society has been a partner for us too. They've come out um, a couple times. We're going to start a bird monitoring and nesting program with the Audubon Society, both the local Audubon Society really, and in the state of Florida. Because we have such an amazing bird sanctuary, really, so the birds don't know that this is a constructed 
wetland, right? They just think it's paradise, like me. Flowers, if you're into plants, come check it out. There's a ton of stuff down there. Uh, I've given this a similar presentation to the Master Gardeners group and their girl in. A few of fo our photos from our grand opening in April. Um, our commissioners came out, our, our mayor came out, that's when Mr. Mr. Bill was cutting our ribbon. Uh, we did a hay ride, <laughs> Bill was a hay ride here. I live on one, traveled the wetland on the back of it, learned all about it. So lots of vendors, so yeah, just a, a really good event to open this place up to the public. It's kind of a hidden gem. Right? We've been in operation for 30 something years, and nobody even knows about it. We don't know where like wastewater goes, nor do we probably care. But now that you can come and check it out, it's a really beautiful place to learn more about the water utility. We are not giving away the park side. We're not going to do paper. We don't want the paper trash created with park map. But we have this awesome interactive web thing you can map and on your smartphone come and visit it and turn on your location where you are with the park. It's a big park. It will, we will have over 22 miles of trails by the time almost bring plenty of water to try. So our next step. Um, right now, wetlands one and two are the only wetlands that are open to the public. That just means that we have trail markers along each of these hiking trails. So if something happens, you call 911 and you say, help me, I'm hurt, I'm by trail marker 2J. In theory, the SWAT team should descend and come and rescue you and you should be fine. If something happens to you and you're down in wetland seven, you're gonna be like, I don't know where you are. You're gonna have to so, learn about alligator rescue. I know. So, yeah, rescue. Here we are. No, no. Um, so, yeah, so the next steps we want to open the rest of Seven Well. Get trail markers out there, get shade structures out there, have some boardwalks for pedestrian traffic finish our signage, which we're working on. And the two big things are probably, we have a master plan, this overlook and observation tower, and our nature education center. Uh, those are pretty big projects. I would like to see them done quickly. I think, the, especially the education center, we are such a good, Seven Wetlands is such a good place for education about our water utility, really anything, our plants, our animals, Lakeland, how unique it is that the city of Lakeland has a wetland and park. So we all can think about how awesome it would sound if it was a rotary turn. Just saying. <laughs> so how can you help? Um, just some things that you can do in your own house um, and yard, like conserving water, right? We are one water. Water comes, it's, it's all the same water. It goes through the water cycle. We're not making any more water on Earth. But we're doing our job as good stewards and, and to use it wisely when it's ours. So both coming into your house and into the environment. So low flow shower heads and toilets only do full laundry and dishwasher loads. Some of you might know this, you might not. Irrigate responsibly. Turn the faucets off when not in use. If you're a little kid, you can teach your, your kids, you know, turn it off. My little kid would tell me that. Turn that off. Good. Florida friendly landscaping on toilets, on a trash can. Fob, fats, oils, and grease. Don't put them down the drain. I think they should go into the waste basket. And I threw this one in there. I don't know. Dispose of the expired pharmaceuticals properly. So if you have any questions, if you're interested in helping or volunteering, um, if you really want to visit, that would be amazing. I don't think one presentation 
who do the place just the first time I went out there, which was in January, and nothing was growing, and it was brown, and I thought, the most beautiful place I've ever seen. So now that it's green and in the summer and lush, it really is just kind of magic. And the, the fact that Lakeland, all of our wastewater, and you would never know, it's pretty phenomenal. So I encourage you to come and visit. If you all want to organize yourselves into a tour, I drive, it does not have four wheel drive, but I drive a 12 person passenger van. So we could organize a tour and go check out the wetland and really see it up close. I would be happy to do that. Yeah. Um, I'll put my contact information probably in your newsletter. So you don't have to necessarily. But that's all. And I think I even got a couple minutes for questions. Go ahead. Good question. So the question was, how does the water move through the different wetlands and act as nature's kidneys? And the answer is a little bit scientific, but this is, but but not at the same time. So there's microorganisms, beneficial bacteria in the soil attached to the plant roots, the plants themselves. They want to just absorb. Plants need nutrients to grow, just like we do. So they want to suck up all the nutrients, which for us. Nitrogen and phosphorus are pollutants for plants. They're like miracle grow. So they want to suck up all that stuff just to grow. Um, there's also a physical process too. So as the water's moving through the different wetlands, it's kind of slowing down, the resonance time is longer. Anything that's big is allowed to settle out. And so only the cleaner water passes through the wetland. Does that answer? Yeah, so if you want to come out and check it out, you can come in through Voice Heart Park. It's off Carter Road, Polk County's Voice Heart Park. Um, Polk County has been an amazing partner for us too. They just redid the entrance to Seven Wetlands. You have to come in through a county park to get to our property. We don't have our own parking lot. We kind of depend on Polk County to help us out, which they have. Come in through Voice Heart Park. We're in the south. East corner of Voice Heart Park, park your car, walk through the gate. Go ahead. So the question is, what's the quality coming into the wetland, and is that really different than like a reclaimed water and the irrigation water? Um, it depends, it changes, but it is treated wastewater. So I had somebody come out and we went to the waterfall, our influent, and they were like, oh, like there's, it doesn't look or smell like what I was expecting. And it smells like chlorine. It smells like pool water, really. You're like through reclaimed water. So it's different, um, but you, similar. Can't drink it, but it, it's treated wastewater. It smells like chlorine. Does that get there? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a good question too. This is one of the first questions that I had when I came to work. The question is, how long does it take a drop of water to get from cell one where it comes in and meander through the different cells before it leaves? And I don't really have, what, what is our residence? That's called residence time. Bill. 150 days-ish. Oh, another fun fact that I should have said. So we get at Seven Wetlands in our waterfall on average about 10 million gallons a day. It's a lot of water that comes through the wetland. So you can think about, you know, just, it's a lot of, I mean, billions of gallons of water treat each year through the wetland. It's pretty impressive. Go ahead. So the question is, what is the use going to be? Public side, will it always, right, right now it's pedestrian. So we don't allow any motorized vehicles, no bicycles, no pets. Um, for the most part, it's hiking, walking, running, jogging. And we've heard from both, both camps. 
So the bike folks are like, why don't you allow bicycles? And the reason is because those berms, when you see them up close, the mount, the slopes would be too enticing for a bicycle not to go down. And any little bit of erosion on a berm can lead, water will find a way through, can lead to significant impact. So we really have to maintain the integrity of the berms. One way is to not allow. On the hiker side, we've also heard thank you so much for just having hiking because we don't have to watch out for bicycles. So we can never, never make that. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> we might do hay rides again in the future, but we usually do not have hay rides out there. I think, you know, we one of our goals for Seven Wetlands is we, we want to educate the public about the property. It's really neat. But we also, you know, want to be fun and through events like a hay ride where we can maybe combine, hey, this is why. The wetlands exist with let's take a hay ride, I think. Um, but right now, no, there's no scheduled Saturday morning. The question is how, um, what's the capacity of the wetlands and have we changed it? And that's a really good question. I don't know the technical numbers. I have asked that too. I know that we have plenty of space. That was the answer for me. Um, we have a fantastic planning council and planning folks at, yeah, Phil, Phil might take the book. Interesting. Um, we, we, as Julie said, we don't have a specific number, but uh, historically, as Julie said, we million gallons coming in and between the combination of evaporation that water vapor leaving and rainfall precipitation coming in we generally see about seven maybe seven and a half gallons of leaf historically when i was working down there and i think recently we have discharged up to 25 30 million gallons a day and that is sustainable very long period of time. Um, so capacity-wise, there's plenty of to, to maintain the, the projected growth for late to be able to. Go ahead. Uh, about how, how, how long are the trails that are open now? About eight-ish miles, eight and a half miles. So I will just maybe I okay thank you maybe I shouldn't say this but so I told you wetlands one and wetlands two are open to the public um, those have trail markers they are very safe we're not if you if you go into wetland three we're not going to say stop turn around um, but you're on <laughs> Yeah, that's right, you're on risk. Remember I said big alligators? Big alligators. Okay, one more, or two more. Go ahead. Where else? Where else is this being done? I'm assuming you mean constructed wetlands? Um, constructed wetlands for large tre treatment of wastewater are actually not super uncommon. They're worldwide. They can be on differing scales. City of Orlando has a large um, constructed treatment wetland, Orlando Wetlands Park. Sweetwater is outside of Gainesville, Kings Prairie. There's a couple of them um, on the East Coast too. So it's not uncommon, but so uh, Bill was saying, I came from Pinellas County government. There is no 1,600 acres in Pinellas County to make anything similar to this. So you do need space to build functioning trees that could take 10 million gallons of water. Go ahead. This is a great question. So the, the question is, is there a projected timeline to open up the rest of the wetland? Um, I will also include to finish the master plan. 
And the answer is, it depends on funding, and that's the honest truth. So how quickly we can get funds, the quicker we'll open it up. We're, we're ready, me, I'm But there's no definitive time that we have to do. I just gave her, like, all things fail, and I get fired, and hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, funds, funding depends. Is it all private funding? No, we've gotten some funding. Most of our funding has come from the state um, so far. And that this is a little blurred line, but we are a water utility on the water utility staff. City of Lakeland has put in money towards this project. But for the park side, we've gotten a lot of funding from the state of Florida. And Bose Company has given us $150,000, 125 so far uh, for an educational pavilion. In Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for having us.